Hey, welcome Build Show Network. Steve Basic, architect here. We're down on the vineyard. Um, we're at one of my previous projects. We're doing a whole kind of master plan out here where we're doing a new residence over there. But a few years ago, we did this accessory structure that the homeowners lived in and soon gonna be moving into their new house over there. But one of the interesting things about this accessory structure was we wanted to build it to passive house level, but we were limited to 800 square feet. Now, that math made us do some uh, interesting things. One of which, you'll notice, look at how thick this wall is. We're probably talking about 16 inches worth of wall here on the outside, and then we have the two by six wall in front of that. So we got a lot going on here. We're gonna jump back to the studio. We'll break out this detail. And we'll talk about what it means to build a passive level, say R70-ish type wall when we're limited to an 800 foot structure. So I'll see you back at the studio. Of course, Big Red's gonna join in and uh, we'll knock it out looking at some details. Alrighty, everybody. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed that little video clip there. Um, while we were out there, we're working on the main house, but I thought it's worth going back and uh, seeing some of the stuff we did on the uh, guest house because it is uh, pretty neat stuff happening out there. So anyways, got our good friend here, Big Red. We got some details. We're going to dive in and uh, we're going to talk about walls that are, uh, you know, upwards of R70 and uh, yeah, with the air barrier in the middle. So um, Joe's perfect wall. So let's hit it. All right, so here's the detail. Now, this doesn't look like your average wall section, so let me try and give you a little orientation. Here is the 10 inch concrete wall. And here's our anchor bolt, right? Or J bolt, some people call it. And there's our double mud cell. are being joist here the other floor joist is right there and then this is our subfloor there and this is our bottom plate of the first floor wall and then obviously the stud there and the stud there. So that's your typical wall section. And then we put sheathing here. So it's very typical to uh, what you might see in a wall section. But this is where the traditional or norm stops. And this is where we expand. So. One of the things about this house we talked about, it was limited to 800 feet. And when I asked the building inspector, how does he measure the 800 square feet? He said he didn't know. And I said, okay, can we agree that we will trace the outside line of the foundation and wherever that is, we'll consider that the 800 foot demising line. And he agreed to that. So. We walked out of the building inspector's office and I looked at the builder and said, Farley, all we got to do is figure out how to develop a passive house wall on the outside of the 800 foot line, which is there. So we did our sheathing. We did a little two by four ledger here that got attached to the mud cell. And then we had floor trusses made. And the floor trusses, that's one, that's one of the cords there, but it had a knockout. And this is the end cord, but it had a knockout here for that two by four. So basically we put in our zip sheathing here in the middle of the wall and then we set the trusses on the knockout stood the trusses leaned them up against the wall plumbed them up and then you can see we have a 
screw there. We have a screw here. We did them 16 inches on center vertically and 24 inches on center horizontally because that's where the studs were. So we wanted to align with the, the studs there. And then that gave us um, 14 inches, right? 14 inches here. So the inside wall of our air barrier, and we taped up that zip. So this is our air barrier down the middle of the wall. So we have drying to the inside and we have drying to the outside. We did a rock wool insulation in here at five and a half inches. It is roughly, I don't know, it's about 4.1 an inch. So what's that make it? Let's just call it R24. It's in that ballpark. And then we had 14 out here, which is 56. This is probably something like R58-ish on the outside. And then on the outside of this, we had our rain screen and then our shingles. But a couple things come into play when you do a wall this thick. Um, you know, when we're at that R5070, well, we're R82 actually. In there. So we have drawing to the outside. We have drawing to the inside. We have a really good air barrier. Um, for those of you that uh, are concerned, when we tested this house, I want to say we were at something like 0 0.50 ACH50. So, um, Pascal's. Um, the 0 0.50 with um, passive house requiring 0 0.60. So, we were well within that um, range. The, uh, the thing that scared me when I was developing this detail is, remember I always tell you, what if water gets in, right? How does water get out? We know that it'll fall to gravity through the material, but I didn't want it to accumulate on the bottom. So what we did was we put a bronze screen across the bottom, and then we basically just put deck boards. These are kind of, you know, the, well, they're not kind of, but they were just simply composite deck boards, because you're not going to see them unless you laid down on your back and crawled up here and looked at it. But you can see there's these 3 16 inch spaces here. And those 3 16 inch spaces do a couple things. One, they could potentially weep any water out, but they also help dry out these areas because they're basically open and totally vented. Now, one of the things you're going to say is, gee, Steve, you go through all the trouble of building this wall, but you aren't concerned about letting cold air in and, and wind washing or washing the bottom of this insulation. Well, keep in mind, this is at the floor joist area. And we're at R58, we're probably equal to that. this being R50-ish here, right? It's probably more like R60-ish, actually. So the whole thing across here is roughly R120. So if there's a place where I can give up a little bit of R value or a little bit of concern about my thermal boundary, it would be in this area. And always remember when we talk about control layers, right? One is water, two is air, three is vapor, and four is thermal, right? So this is a thermal issue here that is number four. But the number one with water, that's a number one issue. So solve for the water, worry about the thermal, fourth down the list. So solve for water, provide that drainage space here to get the water out or to get some air in there to dry it out. Um, so that's the, the thick wall. The, the last thing I'll leave you with that we were talking about on this was what do we put to sheathe the trusses on the outside? Well, 
Here it was real easy. We used zip sheathing. We got it down to 0.5, taped all the joints, worked out as a beautiful air barrier like it always does. Um, but out here, we talked about all kinds of things. Magnesium, oxide board, um, plywood, OSB, all of this. But remember, we wanted it to be able to dry to the outside pretty easily. So when we were coming up with that decision, what we were really looking for was what is, um, you know, inexpensive, what dries, what's easy to install, and what's easy to get. So, what did we go with? We went with pine boards. And the spacing, they're going to dry out, they're going to shrink a little, that joint might open up a little, but that's part of that drying potential, right? Because it's, I have the rain screen in front of that, so my water is going to fall and the air is going to go up and help with the uh, drying potential of my cladding. But those boards are going to allow moisture to move out of the system very easily. The boards are inexpensive, they're easy to install, and they're easy to get. One of the other things that we learned is, is that if we left like every fifth or sixth board out, we could do our insulation in like 30 to 36 inch lifts. So they would fill this, leave this board off, and then they would go up to the next 36 inches, close that off, and then fill this up. And so we, we got, we were insured that we got really good um, insulation installation along that open web truss and that we were able to get all the nooks and crannies filled because we weren't dropping it in from 10 feet above. We were dropping it in from 30, 34 inches above and filling it up. So it worked out really well. And, uh, yeah, so that's the detail. Um, you can see this is that 14 inch thick wall that we looked at when uh, I was standing there in front of it. So anyways, passive house wall, fully cantilevered truss on the outside. Those that heard me um, lecture on it, I called this the sweater, right? If you take a look at the building in section, it's basically a traditional building here. And then we wrapped this 14 inch sweater around the outside of the building and uh, made it nice and snug. Their energy bills, they've been in there for um, a, a few years now and uh, their energy bill is virtually nil for heating and cooling. Uh, most of their bill is plug load and uh, hot water. So, and you'll see in uh, some of the pictures uh, coming up, we're actually putting in the house was a zero energy ready house. And currently the uh, solar panels have been installed and we've not only built a passive house, but we took it to zero energy. So anyways, that's the wall section detail. All right, everybody. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed that detail. This was a really cool project. Um, you know, I thought I'd uh, do some, uh, do a quick video on it while we were out there uh, working and uh, checking out the uh, main house. And this is going to be the guest house on the property. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, detail. Um, I'll keep the outro really short here. If you want to find out more, find me on Instagram at Steve Basic Architect. You can also find me on the Unbuild It show. It's on YouTube and uh, it's a podcast that uh, we shoot with uh, Jake Bruton and Peter Yost. So it's everything, building science, building, building business. So we have a lot of fun doing it. So a lot of antics behind the scenes. So go check it out on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and uh, get a little treat for you here. Um, here's a little slideshow of some of my favorite shots while we had this project under construction. So until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>